Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com, and today I have got a relatively quick tutorial for you where we are going to be talking about how to use background images in Blender 2.8, which is a little bit different than it is in 2.79. Uh, a couple of my older tutorials, people were asking how to use background images, and um, while I'm always happy to explain in the comments, I think it's a little easier to just go ahead and make a video. So here we are. Um, so this is the default Blender setup. Your file should look just like this. I'm doing that so that it's easy for people who you know haven't done crazy stuff to their interface. But yeah, so let's just uh, delete this cube. And to add a background image, we just need to press Shift A to add an object like we would any other object. And then add image and make that a background image. Now, what you need to do from here is just navigate to your um, image wherever you have it saved. This is going to be the hardest part of this tutorial for some people with unorganized folders such as myself. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple uh, images here. You can press this little button to see what the images are. It's just a couple of views of a car that I found online. I, I cut them out for the purposes of this and tried to kind of align them, but use whatever you like, whether it's a logo for an animation or, or if you're also modeling a car or something like that do what you want to do. Um, so let's go ahead and add this front image. So I'm just going to double click that and now it will add it right there in the middle of my scene, but it is at the angle I was looking at, which is a little bit of a funky angle. So uh, I don't want it like that. So what I'm going to do is press Alt R and that's going to reset the rotation. And then now if I press N to bring up my side window, sorry, my side toolbar over here, I can uh, adjust this rotation. So let's just rotate this on the x-axis by 90 degrees. And I'm holding control to snap to those 10 degree increments. Um, now I want to bring it so that the wheels are sitting right on the, the plane here. So I'm going to press G and Z and then just drag it right up to the edge there. And yeah, I mean, so that, that's the basics of it. Now what I'm going to do is just walk through some of um, the other kind of things that are happening here. So, um, We've got the image there. When we look at it from the front, it's great. But when we turn around, it's not there. So that may be something that you want or don't want. Uh, in this case, since I have the back view of the car, that's fine. So uh, if I did want to see it from the other side, I could just go down here into the settings and then change the, the view side to both. And now I'll see it both directions, um, which is helpful in some cases. But in this case, like I said, I have the back. So I'm just going to change that to front only. And now to add the back image, what I'll do is I'll press, I'm just going to, so that I don't have to do the rotation thing, I'm just going to press 1 to go into my front orthographic view, and then I'm going to press Shift A, add an image again, and let's make that another background image, select the back, and then because these images were the same size, uh, they, they come in pretty evenly. So just dragging that up like that. Now they are kind of on top of each other, so I'm just going to press G, Y, move that one back. And uh, you'll notice that we can't see it. Um, it took me a second to figure out at first, but it's actually because when we added, just like the first image was added at a weird angle, it came in at that angle. This one we added in an orthographic view. So the display perspective option is off. If we check that on, then we'll see that now we can see it. Um, now for this one, we're getting the same effect, but I want to actually see this from the back only. So I can enable that option. And now this is working a little more like we would want. Um, a couple other things to look at here. Transparency, if you wanted to, for instance, be able to see the image behind your model, but you still want to see your model and just kind of want it dimmed a little more, you can click Use Alpha. And then what that can do is allow you to adjust the transparency so that this is just kind of, you know, it's, it's working as a reference image. It's not so much or sorry, a background image as defined by Blender, which by the way, the only difference between this reference and background option is just it automatically like enables a couple things. I think when you do a reference image, both of these checkboxes are checked um, and it works for, you know, it, it has all these enabled. Now this depth, I think this is, oh yeah. So this would be like, so for example, we can see our grid um, in front of everything here because it's basically like rendering this last sort of that's what this depth is if it's in front that means it'll be in front of any object so if we were at to add our cube back you can see that no matter what way we look that's always in front but if we were to turn this on to default then yeah it just works like it normally would and now let's see if we turn it back then that means it's 
Okay, so then it's like always behind objects. Yeah, so that's what the back option is doing. Uh, so let's get rid of that cube. And then let's press uh, Alt R. And then we can also press Alt G to bring that back to center. Now let's uh, rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Rotate it on the Z axis by 90 degrees. And so that it's kind of oriented correctly. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Let's just press G Z. Move this right up to the edge so the wheels are sitting on the plane right there. And now I want to scale this up so that it kind of aligns with these other views. So if I press S to scale it, uh, you can see that we've kind of lost what we were doing with aligning the wheels and stuff on that plane. So uh, what I can do is press period on my keyboard and change the pivot point to the 3D cursor, which now means it'll pivot from this uh, this cursor that's right at my origin and also aligned essentially with the wheels. So if I press S now to scale it, it's going to go from that 3D cursor, which is perfect. And by the way, that pivot point has applications in many places in Blender. You'll find that very handy to uh, kind of manipulate with that cursor. So great, that's in there now. This is set up pretty good. Um, now because I did add this as a reference image instead of a background, um, it automatically had it to display on both sides, which with the front and back views, I didn't want that. But with this, um, you know, cars in most cases are pretty symmetrical on both sides. So I'm just going to leave it on the both option. And we can also use the alpha to, you know, make this a little more transparent. Now, the reason it's kind of got this cut out look is because the file I use is actually a PNG and, and it is erased, like that's a transparent. Um, if you just had a regular JPEG image, it wouldn't like automatically cut it out or anything. So that's just dependent on what kind of image you import in there. Now, just a couple other things I want to talk about. These are not like objects, they're, they're empties. So if we look over here, we can see that uh, they've been named empty because that's what they are. Um, and now one thing when you're modeling, you may not want to, you know, accidentally like select those. So what you can do is over here in this scene, you know, outliner, you can change the filter restriction toggles and, and turn this one on that allows you to control what objects are selectable. So these are selectable now, but if I were to go in here and just turn that off on all of them, then you can see we can still select objects like our camera and our lamp there, but we cannot select these empties, which is perfect uh, in the case of something like a background image, because I just want it to stay right there as a reference for when I work, which the more, the more I keep saying it, I don't know why they really have reference and background. I guess it's, it's kind of convenient, but it, it seems a little more confusing. Um, but anyways, if we go into our camera view, and we can see that these are in view. If I were to press F12 to render this, it's not going to, there's nothing there. Like it, it, you'd think that it would be rendering because it's in the camera view, but it's not. And again, that's just because these are just empties. So if you wanted to actually see um, an imported image in a render, like if you were going to try to hang a picture on a wall or something like that, then you would actually have to enable an add-on. There's a number of ways you can do it, like anything in Blender. But I'm just going to go up here into my preferences, and this add-on comes with Blender, so it's it's really not a big deal to, to enable it. I'm just going to search for image, and then it's this one right here, import images as planes. So check that box, close your preferences, and now what I can do is press Shift A, add an image, and then you'll see I have this third option now, images as planes, and then let's just select uh, let's just select one of these as view front. Um, and now we can't see it because we're just in our regular viewport. But if we were to uh, switch over here and turn on like texture, for example, we can see that this object actually has a material automatically applied to it, which is great. So now if we were to go into our rendered view and press F12 to render it, let's actually change this to cycles. You can see that the object is now rendering properly. And if we were to go in our render view in here, we can see that, you know, this is getting light information just like any other object would, um, which is great. You know, if you want to add, like I said, a picture on a wall or, or any, any case where you just want to import an image, it'll automatically come in with the proper aspect ratio and everything. It's uh, it's really pretty convenient to use that add on in, in various cases. Um, so let's go back to our regular view. That's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, it's real easy to to work with these background images. I definitely think that this new system is a good upgrade. It's a little weird getting used to, 
but uh, I do think it's an improvement on the old system in 2.79. Uh, if there's anything else I didn't cover here, or you guys had any questions about something relating to this, feel free to let me know, and I'd be happy to um, answer more questions in the comments. And of course, if you have suggestions for future tutorials, anything you'd like to see, please leave a comment about that as well. I'm always looking for new ideas. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more tutorials, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.